Abacus users. In this video, we are going to show you the most common options you need in the visualization module to display your results. Here we have a simple cantilever beam bending simulation. Click on the viewport menu and select viewport annotation options. In the pop-up window, you can see several tabs, General, Triad, Legend, Title Block, and State Block. Let's see what the General tab does. As you see, there are six checkboxes. Each of them is for displaying or suppressing something in the viewport. For example, untick this one and click Apply. See, the compass is disappeared. You can do the same for others. The next tab is Triad. By Triad size, decrease and increase the size of the arrows. With the Triad Position option, you can change the Triad Position in the viewport. With the triad attributes, you can change the color, labels, and font of the signs of the triad. In this combo box, there are two options for the signs. Either they can be X, Y, Z, or 1, 2, 3. Now I click the Set Label Font button. As you see, you can change the triad signs, font, and size. Here we have two checkboxes for bold and italic styles. These checkboxes allow you to apply the font settings to the legend, title, and state blocks. For example, I tick legend and click apply. See, the legend font changed. The next tab is legend. This checkbox is for showing the legend's bounding box. This one is for the legend's title. And the last one is for showing the minimum and maximum values with the corresponding element and node number. These settings are just like the ones we had for the triad. Now see the changes in the legend's background when I apply these options. You can change the format of the numbers in the legend with these options. We have three formats, scientific, fixed, and engineering. Also, you can change the decimal places with this numeric field. Keep your eyes on changes when I play with these settings. The title block contains the following. The name of the output database from the name of the analysis job, the description of the model, the product name, usually Abacus Standard or Abacus Explicit, and release used to generate the output database. And the, data the output database was last modified. All its settings are just like the ones in the triad and legend. And finally, the state block. It contains text identifying the analysis results associated with the current plot. This information includes step, frame, results, variables, deformation magnification factor, eigenmode, and eigenvalue as applicable. Also, you can customize it just like the legend and title block. One last thing about the viewport. You can change its background color through the view menu, graphic options, and there. Viewport background.
For example, I would like to change its color to white. Now, if you have liked this video so far, thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, click the subscribe button. This is a small part of the Abacus for Beginners training package. There is a lot more valuable information in other parts of this package that you can get on our website. We suggest you do your project by saving your time and getting basic in training so that you don't get tired of Abacus errors. Now let's see several of the general model display options. You can access these options two ways. Click on this icon or through the view menu and select ODP display option. In this window, we have several tabs, general, entity display, constraints, sweeps, extrude, and mirror pattern. First, the general tab. Here, our focus will be on the idealization section. There are two checkboxes, one for the beam profiles and the other for the shell thickness. If your model is shell like the one we have here, when you tick the render shell thickness and click apply, the thickness of your model will be displayed. But what about the other option? To show you how it works, I must open another ODB file. This is a cantilever beam with a rectangle profile created in the property module which is subjected to pressure from here. To see its profile, you must tick this option, render beam profiles and click apply. You can change the scale factor to make it look bigger, smaller, or in whatever size you see fit. Let's go to the next tab. There are a lot of checkboxes here and each one is for showing something in the viewport. The first one is for showing boundary conditions, the second one is for connectors, and you can see the rest here. For example, if I tick this option and apply it, the boundary conditions will be shown. Let me open the first model again. See, this end is fixed and we have displacement at the other end. You can change the size of these symbols with this slider here. In the next tab, we can display or suppress the constraints with these checkboxes. The next tab is Sweep Extrude. If you have an axisymmetric model, you can sweep your model through a specified angle to display it as a three-dimensional model. Obviously, as it says here, the current model is not axisymmetric, so this option is not available. So, let me open another model. This model shows a forming process of, you could say, a sink. As you see, it is displayed as 2D shapes. Let's use the sweep option. This one is for sweeping the deformable parts and this one is for the rigid parts. Let's try the first one. I accept the defaults and click apply. Now you can see the model in 3D.
If you increase the number in this numeric field and apply it, you can see that the model's edges become smoother. Now I'm going to sweep the rigid parts. See, the rigid parts are in 3D shapes. The extrude option is for analytical rigid surfaces and all of the planar 2D solid elements in the Abacus library along with the Z direction. As you see, this option is not available for this model. Let's open another model. This model shows a rolling process. Now, if you open the ODB display options, you can see that the extrude is available. Like before, this one is for deformable parts and this one for analytical rigid parts. I tick both and click apply. Now you can see the model in 3D. You can change the depth of each one with these fields. The last tab is Mirror Pattern. Here we focus on the Mirror option and to show you how it works, I'm going to open another model. This is a quarter of a plate subjected to tension. I take this plane and we would have this portion of the model. I take the YZ plane and the other half portion will be displayed. Well, these were the common options for model display. Now let's see the common plot options. You can access these options in two ways. The easy one is just to click on this icon. And the other is through the options menu and select common. Here we just explained the basic tab, labels and other tab. First the basic tab. In the render style section there are four options. You can see the changes in the deformed and undeformed shapes when I apply them one at a time. Here you can change the deformation scale factor. By default it would be automatic. But sometimes you need to see the actual deformation or in the scale you see fit. So select the uniform option and enter your value. Or you can use the non-uniform option and specify the scale factor for each direction separately. On the right side, you can choose which edges of the model are supposed to be displayed. For example, the Feature Edges option shows only the model's edges. No edges will remove all edges. Now let's see the Labels tab. There are four checkboxes here. One is for Element Labels, Face Labels, Note Labels and Note Symbols. I can show each of them with these checkboxes. For example, node labels and node symbols. I tick both of them, then click apply. Now if I zoom in, I can see each node with its number. Moreover, I can customize them, changing their colors, fonts, 
font size and so on. Now let's see the options in the other tab. First, scaling. You can shrink the elements with any factor you want by toggling on this option. For example, I changed it to 0 0.15. See, all elements now look smaller. Also, you can shrink them in any direction you want by toggling on this option. Next, we have translucency. If you apply it, you can make the model transparent or opaque by playing with this slider here. The last thing before we say goodbye is how to get a high quality picture from the results. One way is to change the background color, customize the fonts and font size using the options we discussed and take a screenshot. Another way is to use the print option. Go to the file menu, then print. First, place the model's position where you see fit and its view. With these three checkboxes, you can choose whether you need viewport background, viewport decorations, or viewport compass. This one should be set to color. Select file, browse the path you want to save your file. Toggle off this option, select the PNG format and click OK or apply. As you see, we have a great quality picture of the results. Well, that's it. If you like this video, don't forget to like it. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, click the subscribe button.